are you doing? We're Katie and Stevie and we're here for another interview. Woo! She has worked with Niju, Weekly, Kai, Astro, The Boys, Very Very, and Kunakun, singer, songwriter, and real life mermaid. We are gonna be talking to Frankie Day. Should we get her on? Yeah, let's go. Could you begin by just giving a brief introduction about yourself to our viewers? My name is Frankie Day. I am a K-pop singer and songwriter from Brighton in the United Kingdom and I am with The Hub Korea. So that's uh, where I started my K-pop journey. So you briefly mentioned The Hub and that was sort of the start of your K-pop career. But how yes. did you actually get into songwriting and singing in the first place? As cliche as it is, from the moment I could uh, make sounds, I was singing. Aww. So um, yeah, when I was four years old, I actually started um, professional studio work as a vocalist on um, children's Christian albums. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> we were doing uh, little worship songs and stuff. But uh, that's where it all started for me and it kind of carried on. It was always a dream that I was chasing throughout my school life, throughout high school. Um, I then went on to study music at college. Um, big up Northbrook College. Put up, put up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I was uh, in college, I actually applied to a job site where uh, I came across a advert for a job singing demos for K-pop art artists and idols. Oh, wow. Yeah, and I had, at, up until that point, I had not been too big on K-pop. I'd, I'd, I'd heard a few things. I'd heard EXO um, mm. and they had blown my mind. And I think that was my first kind of introduction to K-pop was um, Overdosed. Oh, oh, nice. A good introduction. Yeah, an amazing song, blew my mind. So I saw that. Uh, advert and I was like oh my gosh because I'd always loved um, J-pop you see mm -hmm. uh, I was very into Hatsune Miku that's why I oh. my hair oh, oh my gosh, gosh yes, yes. <laughs> so yeah I'm, yeah I was into that in high school that's where the blue hair came from it stuck with me but um, so I applied to this job and sent off some uh, little examples of my voice and they were like oh you suit um, you kind of sound like IU they said uh, and they said you know let's uh, try doing some demos and it was actually Charlotte Wilson I don't know mm. if you know Charlotte Wilson yet from yeah. the hub. so it was actually her advert I did the demos for them thought nothing of it really and then um, we lost touch for about a year a year later I get a message from her on Facebook saying hey I've been looking for you for ages you know trying to find you um, again um, just found you on here let's work and I was like okay okay sure let's do it <laughs> um, we got working I think this was in um, 2017 mm -hmm. uh, we got working again and she actually about two months into us working my time scale might be a little off but uh she invited me to go out to korea with her i'd never met her in person this was all literally me just blindly trusting someone i'd met on the internet just don't <laughs> follow my path okay <laughs> but um yeah she invited me out to korea as a vocalist and at that point i wasn't songwriting i was just vocaling my partner was just like if you don't do this you're gonna regret it like you've got to just take the chance that's kind of where it started and when i got out to korea um i discovered that i could write which was um quite an epiphany that, <laughs> that i'm grateful happened because here we are now do you know what i mean wow that's that is such amazing, amazing story, story like yeah. seriously yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And to be compared to IU as well, mm. that, wow. That, I mean, yeah, at the time, uh, I think I didn't know how big of a compliment that was. And then as I grew to know more K-pop, I was like, damn, like these people really compared me to this like icon. Do you know mm. what I mean? I was like, what? I appreciate it. <laughs> We've heard from some other people in the hub that you guys do these like camps where you spend a couple of days making songs. Is that when you first started songwriting yeah that's right that first trip that i went to korea the hub wasn't a thing okay actually at that time the producer who i first met um along with brian from the hub the ceo mm. uh, was aftershock oh my gosh yeah aftershock producer yeah so um we were working with him and at that particular camp i started uh, kind of chipping in my ideas on one of the songs 
And I remember Charlotte just being like, she introduced me to some new people for the first time in the industry. And she was like, yeah, this is Frankie. And um, we just found out like, she's a dope writer and da da da. And I was literally like, you think I can write? Like I'm doing something <laughs> right, do you know what I mean? And I was like, wow. <laughs> and then I was like, yeah, I'm a songwriter now, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was the first time. So yeah, it was at a camping career. How did the hub start then? Charlotte, on that trip, we met Brian and then I actually introduced Charlotte to my now husband, Jacob, mm. um, who is a really dope uh, male vocalist and also a songwriter and he's been songwriting for years. And <laughs> she was just straight away like oh why isn't he why isn't he on this team like why aren't we working with him more why aren't we could be doing some really dope male tracks you know and i was like yeah well this is why i'm showing you him because um <laughs> and uh yeah he ended up kind of starting to do some demos with us we started writing some male tracks and actually one of the first male tracks we wrote was butterfly um which the boys uh, took and that was Jacob's vocal and actually they copied that so perfectly like they really sounded like it sounds oh, yeah. so close to the original it's oh crazy oh, wow. yeah it sounds so close like they really mimicked his vocal in it I guess that's a huge compliment yeah they that can change really so interesting. Much. yeah because a yeah. lot of people that we've talked to they said the start and the end completely different like you wouldn't even know that it was like the same song yeah. but for them to like keep it it the sounded same, almost identical like it's the first one I've heard where I was like this just sounds like Jacob singing in Korean. I was like, oh my wow. gosh, that's amazing. Yeah. So yeah, from then on, we uh, we then got really close to Brian and Charlotte and Brian had this idea to kind of make it into a production company and it became this big thing that it is now. We became the hub, just the three of us to begin with. And then, uh, and, and obviously Brian's producers, Mark Long and um, Enan and people like that. It was just us, we were quite small. And then we went to a song camp in the Netherlands where oh. we met, you know, Orai. Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, um, <laughs> and Shanti. <laughs> and Nurio and Jan Bars mm -hmm. yeah. and Rajan. We all just clicked, like we really, really clicked and we had the best time. There are so many stupid stories. We keep hearing that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Honestly, if we ever meet in person, I'll, I'm showing you the videos. Yeah, we've been told about the footage. <laughs> it's gonna come back and haunt us one day. So that's where we all met. And then uh, we invited them all out to Korea because um, I'm one of those people as well who gets really overexcited when I meet people that I like. I'm like, oh, we could do this together. Let's, you know, come to Korea. And they're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, Korea. Um, but they did and we, uh, yeah, and we became the hub. That we are now. So you know a bit more about K-pop now. Is there anyone that you'd really like to work with? So I really, really would like to work with IU just because that's kind of where my K-pop journey started. Mm -hmm. um, was you know listening to a lot of her music and trying to um, yeah trying to sound as close to her as possible at times. So for female artists, I would love to work uh, with IU. Um, I would love to write for Twice. Yeah, I would love to. Uh, Yan. Obviously, I'm Rajan, have written for twice. He wrote Breakthrough, and uh, mm -hmm. that's just one of my favorite songs. Yeah. <laughs> I literally love that song so much. Male artists. Woo! Stray Kids. Oh, yes. Stray Kids. <laughs> You're a fan. You <laughs> yeah, they're on the bucket list for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've, um, I actually met them in the studio. Um, no. So, yeah, they were recording one of their albums there and um, yeah they're very beautiful <laughs> and they're very talented <laughs> they're like my bucket list that's a good bucket list yeah you've been all over the internet with this Tom Hiddleston thing so you met Tom Hiddleston and you taught him the k-pop part like how did that happen I went into that meet and greet um, nervous as hell um, I knew exactly the pose that I wanted to do with him um, I'd not seen him do it before but apparently he had oh yeah I went in and I uh, I immediately said to him do you know the k-heart do you know the k-heart and he was like of course <laughs> Um, yeah, and he was uh, he was really sweet. He was complimenting my hair. We turned to the camera, and he immediately uh, did his little. And uh, yeah, I, I just I wasn't expecting it to uh, blow up at all. I was just obviously over the moon to have met someone who I who I admire so much in yeah. the acting industry, you know. Um, but yeah, it's just 
mind blowing. <laughs> <laughs> I love the picture so much. It's so cute. Yeah, it's very cute. He's smiling so genuinely as well. Like in every fan meet and greet that you see, he's literally like the biggest smile, so natural. I'm just like, oh, how do you do that? <laughs> I was petrified. You can see it in my eyes, right? My pupils have dilated <laughs> so much in that photo. And literally, I, I was like, I couldn't t teeth smile in that moment. Like, I wanted to like, you know, but it was just like. <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> I think he got away with it. I think it looks like he could be the fan. Yeah. And that's the beauty. That's the beauty of it. People were saying this. I was like, no, honey. <laughs> I appreciate it though. I appreciate it. Yeah, it was a petrifying moment for me. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I've attended MCM pretty much every year, um, obviously until COVID. So, yeah. Oh, uh, wow. But yeah, I love it so much. And it always falls on my birthday because it's the 25th of October. It's usually the last day of MCM. So. Oh, that's amazing. Wow, that was a brilliant birthday present yeah <laughs> did you t did you tell him it was your birthday i forgot and oh. i forgot to wear my birthday badge so i was so excited that day when i woke up i was like he's gonna say happy birthday to me <laughs> <laughs> and yeah no <laughs> didn't quite work out that way but you know what we got a cute picture it was my first time ever and i thought well i'm probably never going to do this again um yeah first time i was like go for uh, the k heart yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely Do it for the K-Heart. <laughs> you are moving to Korea soon. Next month, right? What are your plans? Is that for the hub? Yeah, that's that's for the hub. We were supposed to be going last year or beginning of this year, actually, January. But everything's just been moved back and back with COVID. It's finally happening. Yeah, December, we're going to be uh, going out there permanently to work on music full time, which is crazy like so crazy. crazy i'm still working in a coffee shop at the moment guys like you know, <laughs> I mean, you know i'm like saving every penny i'm like I'm gonna <laughs> need to be able to live out there but <laughs> <laughs> you think it'll be easier to progress in your career and just have more opportunities when you're in Korea? Definitely, definitely, yeah. Um, and I think being out there and being surrounded by the culture and the language is going mm -hmm. to really help me develop further in that industry for sure. It's so hard to learn a language when you're not in the country. And, uh, you know, I've, kudos to people who do it. I really struggle. Uh, I have ADHD as well, so it's just like, for me to focus on something for that long is like, yeah, it's <laughs> grueling. Being out there and being surrounded by it, it's going to really be amazing. I think it's going to open a lot of doors. What are you most worried about missing? There is nothing I love more than a little trip to Sainsbury's. I'm a Sainsbury's girl. Um, oh. Than a little trip to Sainsbury's and getting a load of snacks and, you know, like just bread, like bread and... Yeah. Um, roast chicken there is where is the bread in korea guys i forgot about that it's all like brioche it's sweet. like yes it's like it's cake sweet. yes i have to go to paris baguette and even then it's just a sandwich have you got sort of any projects lined up for when you're out there in korea some really big things coming up yeah really big things that you're gonna find out but i just can't tell you that's okay that's okay Knowing is enough. Yeah, there's yeah, something coming. Yeah. There's um there's a few very big things that I could have only ever dreamt of that are in the pipeline. So yes, you will find out soon enough. Have you got any advice sort of for young people that might be interested in songwriting, producing, working in the music industry, anything that you would sort of say to them? I would say the obvious thing that everyone will tell you is to keep at it even if um, you feel like it's just a dead end. Um, and even if people are saying, you know, I always got told um, it's like a Mickey Mouse job. It's like not, it's like make believe, you know what I mean? It's not, mm. not something that realistically you can achieve. Mm. Um, but do you know what? I pressed on, I'm making progress. Let's, you know, let's say that, um, you know, things are happening for me and if it can happen for me I really think it can literally happen for anyone you just have to be really dedicated and put everything that you can into it and I will say as well like I said before I'm currently working in a coffee shop okay I'm currently doing nine to five every day um, trying to make as much money as I can so that I can make this dream happen for myself and there is no shame in doing that if you're thinking god like you know, I'm out here having to work a nine to five and all these people look like they're doing it full time and blah, blah, blah. You know, there's no shame in like working really hard to get where you need to be and to fuel the dreams that you have, you know, 
it's costly sometimes and every day that you're working at that nine to five you are getting one step closer to um being able to achieve what you want to because you're putting that all your energy into something that's going towards that do you know what i mean so um everything is for a reason you're doing the right thing just keep going it will happen i promise <laughs> it will it will you just gotta push that was beautiful <laughs> i didn't even turn it up what a TED talk. It's exciting to see where the hub is gonna go. Whenever there's a new K-pop track list, we're always like looking through the credits. And it's like, but so often you see the hub. And yeah. I'm like, oh, it's them again. No yeah. way. There's always the hub next to someone's name somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> It's really great to see us like spreading out and you know I'm even the same sometimes I don't even know that someone on our team has got a cut and I'm and I'll see it on um, on an album and I'm like what what when did this happen you know it's just yeah mad talented people in my um, team I'm so grateful that was amazing thank, thank you, thank you so, so much, much. <laughs> this has been such a good chat it really has it's been so nice to meet you guys as well just like I feel like I've watched your YouTube channel and I'm just like oh, really <laughs> Like, now it's me. <laughs> <laughs> My turn. <laughs> Yeah. And it's like, we, we don't, don't think, think about people actually, actually watching us. Watching you. Just, yeah, 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 we just do Well, it. they do, <laughs> and I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah, I love it, I love it. Thank you so, so much for talking to us. It's been lovely hearing your story, and we're so excited to share it with our viewers. And yeah, big thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for watching, guys. We hope you enjoyed this interview. Please leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If there's anyone else that you would like to see us interview or if you want to be interviewed, then drop us a comment, drop us an email, let us know. And don't forget to like, subscribe, check out our interview playlist to see all of our other ones. And we'll see you very soon for more videos. Bye.